All right, let's say that I was friends with Kirk Cameron, and let's say that Kirk Cameron was over my house one day, and I told Kirk Cameron that the story of the Three Little Pigs was a true story. Now, I think we can all agree that Kirk Cameron would have to be incredibly stupid to believe me, especially if I don't give him any evidence, if I didn't back it up with some kind of scientific information, some kind of research done by a respectable source. If I didn't give him any evidence at all and he believed me, we can all agree that he is very, very stupid. But this is the exact definition of the word faith. Faith means to believe in something that you don't have any proof for, which is exactly the same thing as Kirk Cameron believing me when I tell him that the story of the Three Little Pigs is true. Now, every single one of us would make fun of Kirk Cameron if he believed me for telling him that without any evidence. Which makes me wonder, why does our society revere men of faith? Because it's exactly the same. These men are the biggest retards of our society. They take great pride in believing in things without any evidence. Faith is not something you should be proud of. Faith is something to be scorned, ridiculed, and mocked at every chance. Because why would anyone believe anything without evidence? This is an insane way to live your life. Faith does not make you pious. Faith makes you gullible. The definition of the word gullible is to be easily tricked or deceived. And who are the people who are easiest to trick and deceive? The people who believe in things without any evidence. The faithful. Of course, I realize that most Christians don't consider themselves to be gullible. They believe there's lots of information backing up Christianity. They've been told this over and over again by preachers and their friends and their family, and so they just believe it. But when you actually go to Christians and you actually ask them point blank what the evidence is, you find that they have no idea. Now, if you talk to them online, they go look it up real fast, and they copy and paste things from Christian websites. But if you talk to them one-on-one -on -one in the real world and you ask them what the information is, normally they have no idea. And really, they don't care. Just knowing the evidence exists is enough for them, and it doesn't bother them at all that they don't actually know what it is. Because not knowing what the evidence is only makes them more faithful, and in their minds, the more faithful they are, the better. But the more faithful you are, not the better. This is ridiculous. This is exactly the same thing as Kirk Cameron believing that Three Little Pigs is a true story. There's no difference here, people. Fortunately, there are some Christians who actually do want to know what the evidence is. They don't want to just take the Bible on blind faith, so they go and research it for themselves. And time and time again, when they do this, they go to the same exact three sources. Ken Hovind, Lee Strobel, and Josh McDowell. And then once they've gone and read what Lee Strobel, Josh McDowell, and Ken Hovind have to say, they normally think to themselves, well, that proves it. I was right all along to be a Christian. But you weren't right all along to be a Christian. This is incredibly flawed logic. It's exactly like this. Let's say I was in the Nazi party, and one day I decided, hey, I better go research it and see if being in the Nazi party is really a great idea. So the first thing I do is go read the words of Hitler in his book Mein Kampf to see what he has to say about it. And when I'm done reading Hitler's Mein Kampf, I walk away and say to myself, well, that's that. I was right all along to be a Nazi. But I wasn't right all along to be a Nazi. If you only go and read the words of Hitler to see if Nazism is a good idea, you're obviously going to walk away with a positive spin about Nazism. Likewise, when you only go read the words of Christians when you're researching Christianity, you're obviously going to walk away with a positive spin on Christianity. Duh! If you want to be intellectually honest with yourself, you're going to have to go one step forward, and it's a big step. You're going to have to actually research what these men have to say and see what the experts say about it. See if the experts agree with Ken Hoven. See if the experts agree with Josh McDowell and Lee Strobel. And if you'll actually do this, if you'll actually go out and research all this stuff for yourself, then you'll find what me and many, many people before me have found out. You have been deceived since birth by people who meant well, but ultimately did not really have enough information to break free of the curse of faith. Because that's what faith is. Faith is a curse. A curse of not having enough information. Now your mother, your father, your grandfather, your grandmother, they all meant well. None of them knew they were lying to you. But they didn't have enough information to know any better. But here's the good news. You do. You have enough information to break free of the curse of faith because you live in a glorious time where practically anything you want to know is available to you instantly. You don't have to take things on faith anymore. You can know for sure right now what is more probable to be true than not. You just got to do a little research. Our society no longer has to be imprisoned by a Bronze Age mythology written by primitive people. We have cell phones and high-definition TVs and computers now. And the men who gave us these things, the scientists, have doubled the life expectancy of every single one of you. They've proven time and time again that they know what they're talking about. 
You don't have to take their words on faith. You can see it for yourself right now in your own living room. Just look around. Look at your flat screen TV and look at your computer screen and look at your electricity. The proof that these men understand the natural laws of this world, at least better than anyone else, is all around us. Yet, still the majority of you believe the words of primitive Bronze Age people instead of your own eyes. Could there be any greater delusion than that? So in conclusion, faith is retarded. The more faith you have, the more retarded you are. Luckily, knowledge is to faith what light is to darkness, and the fact that you are hearing my words right now means you already have access to the greatest source of knowledge the world has ever known. For the love of God, people, use it.